<laughs> oh my god, dude, I gotta show you something. You really gotta stop drinking respawn, man. Oh no, this is something else. All right, this better be good. <laughs> All right, you ready? You had some respawn, didn't you? Okay, watch this. Oh, how, how, how'd you do that? <laughs> have I had too much respawn? I have no idea. I have an idea. <laughs> It's already open. Wow. Well, hello there. Where'd you come from? It don't matter. It's about where I'm going. Well, I don't really need a new mouse right now. Sure, we'll see. Everybody loves a four-way hidden D-pad and a cool OLED display. Plus, I'm quite sensitive at 24,000 DPI plus RGB. You gotta try. What was I thinking saying no to you? The MM830 by Coolmaster. The mouse you didn't see coming. Check it out below. Wow, so it is finally here. I'm really excited to actually be using the Razer Blade Pro 17. You can get up to speed with an awesome preview Eber did right over here. But I'm trying to get into the mindset of somebody who might actually use this on a daily basis because I've considered switching to a notebook as my main many, many times away from my desktop. As for my Razer Blade 15, this has been my main production machine on the go. Uh, it has treated me really well in terms of the specs, but to be honest, gaming on this thing is super uncomfortable at this form factor. It's not something that uh, I enjoy doing. It constantly needs to be plugged into the wall to get the best performance. You cannot rely on battery power as you can with my MacBook, for example. Like right now, if I would close it while it's sleeping, the next day it would die. And also, unless it's completely idle, uh, the shell itself, the aluminum shell is either warm or hot and the fans are spinning and are audible. Now the Razer Blade 17 is just a supersized version of the 15 model, but with much better cooling, better speakers, better IO, better Razer software and slightly different configuration and pricing. And so we were talking with Mike and Eber about what does this machine want to be? Is it the gaming station giving the full HD resolution display, which is easy to run given this hardware, but also 140 for Hertz is a fantastic experience, or is it a workstation given the screen comes factory calibrated, which is nice, but it's only a 300 nit brightness, so it's not exactly suitable for outdoors. Or is it kind of like a perfect hybrid? Uh, but that is where the challenge comes in because there is currently no 4K option as that is being saved for the studio edition of the Pro 17 and that will come with 4K OLED and RTX Quadro. Plus the whole thing with Studio Edition versus Pro Edition is kind of confusing because the Studio Edition is like for creatives only given the RTX Quadro graphics, but then what is the Pro demographic? Is it gamers or is it creators? Meanwhile, the Blade 15 has more configuration options with 4K OLED already available, a 240 Hz option in there too with 9 gen CPUs, with the price deltas decreasing as we move up the RTX chain. And so the Pro 17 looks to be slightly competitive versus the Blade 15 price-wise in the RTX 2070 and the RTX 2080 models, but what's up with the 512 gigabyte of SSD storage on all Pro 17 models? Not even a terabyte for the Pro market and especially at this price point. Come on. I will say there is an open M.2 slot inside the Pro 17, so it is user upgradable. Uh, you can expand your storage, but still not giving us a terabyte is highly disappointing. Now, physically, it is quite impressive that we get so much extra screen with only a slightly thicker body, but with pretty slim bezels and a super clean interior format. However, this thing does not fit in any of my backpacks and it's also 31% heavier versus my Blade 15, making it less portable. The other concern for me would be the massive surface area that is black aluminum on the lid and around the keyboard that immediately gets covered with finger marks, which is why I installed a skin on my Blade 15, which looks awesome, which is going to be a must for the Pro 17 as well. And so the main difference between the Blade 15 include a new hinge system that is incredibly smooth and is now more open to accommodate the extra ventilation design. The new vapor chamber cooler on here is excellent, delivers much better performance versus the Blade 15 with exactly the same hardware. So the CPU clocks higher and the same thing with the GPU uh, that are not throttling and maintain 
nice consistent clocks throughout. And my full performance analysis between the Pro 17 and the Blade 15 will come a bit later. They've also added more fans to the front of the chassis for intake to channel all that airflow through the vapor chamber, which was great. But that also means that there's less room for the battery and the battery capacity inside the Pro 17 is actually smaller than the Blade 15. So it looks like they prioritized on performance and cooling on the Pro 17 versus battery life. And I'm totally okay with that. If you plan on taking this thing on the road and actually working on this on your lap, then you're doing it wrong. And the battery bank is the same 230 watt hours as my Blade 15. So nice and compact. So you just have to worry about fitting that machine into some bag uh, and not so much about the power brick. As for port selection, everything meets the pro criteria. There's a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. All of the USB ports are gen two. There's a USB-C and Thunderbolt three ports, plus a UHS three USB card reader that is definitely appreciated for all who use that media. I know some people were hoping for a numpad given the much larger interior surface area, but I'm really content with the keyboard layout aside from the really awkward uh, arrow up key. As for the actual keyboard that feels identical to my Blade 15, nice crispy keys, beautiful RGB illumination. However, the trackpad feels slightly worse. They're still using Windows Precision drivers and the actual surface feels amazing, but the actual navigation feels like there's a slightly delay or like latency versus on my Blade 15, everything is snappy and feels like one-to-one. -one. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not the case with my Pro 17. And so for my initial impressions with this machine, I'm happy the direction they've taken in terms of redesigning it to look like the Blade 15. It's modern, it's beautiful, it's compact, yet the performance uh, seems to be there. So make sure to stay tuned for my full performance analysis between the two machines. And um, I'm kind of leaning towards this to be my mobile workstation now because the larger screen feels great. Although again, the whole idea of not having a 4K option on the Pro model is so confusing to me. Uh, I know it's coming with the Studio Edition, but like the UI, the 17 inch form factor, you'd expect to be slightly sharper with like little things in the creative apps. Uh, and that is one major drawback. And so perhaps the whole pro distinction is like a pro gamer or something like that, because I can't think of why Razer would not include a 4K display option on this thing just yet. I guess they're saving it for the studio edition and don't want to jeopardize the hype surrounding that machine. All right, guys, so those are my first impressions with the Pro 17. If you've been on the market for a notebook on a bigger side, why? Why do you need something like it? Let me know in the comments. I would love to get into the mindset of those exact people so that I can deliver a full out review on something that you might potentially want. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. And this thunder will not stop going. Huge rain outside. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.